Yeah, well, my good friends, I got a little thing today from uh, Scott Donker about achieving the impossible. Physicists create a fluid with negative mass. They did not create a fluid with negative mass. They created a fluid that had a positive potential, which means that it will push away from virtually everything because everything is loaded with electrons and is coated with electrons. There is nothing that exists that is not coated, literally painted, with electrons which are negatives. Therefore, everything you push against is also has a surface of negativeness, which means it will push away from the thing you push it against. They created something, they say, well, it comes towards when you push your negative thing towards it. Well, obviously, it's coming towards it because it's positive, not because it's gone into negative mass. And how did they make it positive? Very simple. They cooled it down to somewhere around negative, uh, absolute zero, which means they've pulled every single extra electron out of it. And that is the only thing that happens as you cool things down. You're removing more and more and more electrons, creating more and more open space for those other electrons to exist in, creating a more positive mass. And the Earth is a positive, attractive source. Therefore, instead of the particle being pulled to Earth because it's surrounded with a whole batch of negatives, you blow all those off by sucking them off by cold. That becomes positive. This is positive. Blip! It gets pushed away. That is the absolute story that they're doing there. They're doing nothing fancy at all. And I have a, a the electron flood theory. It's extremely simple theory, it, and it solves, solves everything. I haven't found one single interaction that I can't solve with electron flood theory. It's zero. And it accounts for gravity. It accounts for dark matter. It accounts for dark energy. And it's nothing more than the core being flooded with electrons. That's all there is to it. And there's 1,836 particles in every proton. Half are positive and half are negative, and every single neutron has one additional electron, so it's 1837. The electrons flood the core. I don't know if it's a snowball core or it's a solid mass like that of positive flooded with electrons. I can't tell, to be honest with you, but I can see that there is the flood, it's 50 50, and always every single atom, every single element has additional neutrons or electrons. In the case of hydrogen, it has one extra electron in the core. It does not weigh the weight of one proton in the core. They claim it's one proton. It's not. It weighs more than one proton. It weighs more than one proton. I don't know. They just got their heads in the cloud thinking, I don't know what they're thinking. But you can't solve any of the isotope issues with one giant proton, one giant neutron, and one tiny electron. It cannot, it cannot happen. It doesn't happen. You cannot account for the isotopes. They will not fit into that Bohr model. Electron flood, no problem whatsoever. This is the truth. Okay, this is Latham's crazy, crazy machines. And this is incredible tractor beam um, magnet. Now, that is the core, which is a positive core surrounded by negatives. That creates still a strong, attractive positiveness to the outside world, but they cannot get in because these negatives create a zone of negativity, so the new negatives coming in will be held at quantum distances, which they are. So this is the new electron. Boom. There it is. That is exactly what quantum mechanics is. That is a flooded nucleus, electron flooded. That is the electrons, and they would cloud it, and he shows them later in this video, clouding. That is, as it shakes, it means more electrons are being flooded in, pushing and shaking and vibrating the molecule, heating it. When they go flying off, 
they are that's the photo effect and where they are flying in and become uh, light there it is now I do have a, a lot of information and a lot of videos about this and um, light is is nothing more than these particles in transit from luminous sources they're dark in space but they are still there they're moving towards us they are the dark matter and the dark energy that exists in space there is, space is not empty it's loaded with particles they're just unseen until they concuss and they don't concuss in the in the vastness of space there is just too many of them there is enough room for them not to concuss and glow but once they hit the atmosphere of earth and all the congestion of all the particles they concuss they glow that is the nature of them i can't explain the glow but i can see it and rodney's experiments show this extremely clearly all right, I'm just going to go through this real quick, but this is red laser light, just a standard red laser light. Light is light. That is a light accelerated. There's no question whatsoever that has accelerated. This is just a na natural light that is accelerated, and you can see the particle beam in the center. Light is particles. When it comes through this plasma chamber, which is nothing more than a restriction, it forces them to crush into each other's zones and regions. They plasmatize and begin to ex get extreme energy, and that's called a boson. It comes out of here so high powered and above the speed of light until it crashes into the standard fields, uh, I mean the, um, the standard space that has not accelerated and crushed and then the particles that exist in that space because this is a spinning extremely spinning fast particle and it's polar it has a polarity to it and as it spins it fluffs these particles into fields that surround it there's no other way that you can see that now this is the fields this little particle here came through and turned brilliant white up way off to the side up here instead of a field and when it came through and it concussed with another one of these it created that whatever it is I don't know but it's interesting these are the particles as they come through the other side of the Venturi and come out they are black and white up and down up and down they look two bar magnets side to side that's all I can see there, and I don't know if you can see any different with your eyes, but this is what I see with mine. And that, that is a photon. So we have po positive and we have negative. Now I want to show you something I just finally discovered after three years of working with these photographs. Now you saw the regular wave, and then you saw the accelerated wave, and then you saw the particles displaying as they concuss with one another. Then you see the Cheryankov white radiation. I don't see any black in there. It's 100% pure white. What happened to the dark particles? Well, this is an extremely magnified, and then I found them. Here they are. They're reforming. Yeah. Yeah. And then some of them are up here too, and some of them are down here. They they are pushed away from the electrons at this point. So I'm starting to think that the positive particles have some ability to separate from the negative particles under these extreme conditions, which is this adventuri. So that's what I see. Now I don't know what anybody else sees there, but we started out as light. It accelerated. There is no question about that. That is white Cheryankov radiation. That is pure, brilliant white, and now they start to come back. Where were they between here and there? That's what I want to know. What happened here? How come that is so brilliant white? Why don't we see any little balls of black floating through here? That's, that's got me perplexed at the moment how they end up coming back. And, and they always come back to the same color they started. Why do they come back to the same color? I have to assume they're a certain size of a particle. The only thing I can t take away from this is something, something going on with the size of the particle, the spin of this particle, something like that. Now, frequency, yeah, yes, but why would it go into this? That's, a high, that's obviously not the same frequency it came in at. 
but it does go back to that same frequency. Why? These are the things that keep me awake at night. <laughs>